I am thoroughly excited to introduce the two guests tonight, and I am using Samantha Irby-inspired amounts of exclamation points to do so. Samantha Irby is the author of four essay collections, a long-running, long-celebrated blog, Bitches Gotta Eat, and her newest collection, Quietly Hostile, which comes out today! <laughs> Quietly Hostile is one of 2023's most anticipated books by Time, Oprah Daily, and many more. It is uproariously funny, and she dives into the beauty of the true brilliance of sex in the city and the shifting moods of pandemic-adopted dogs. In conversation with Irby is someone who also has quite a lot to say about dogs and their owners, a friend of a friend of mine, Kelsey McKinney. McKinney is the host and writer of the juiciest podcast out there, Normal Gossip, and is a feature writer of De at Defector.com, where she writes a variety of things, among them a bi-weekly column, Zillowed Out, for every Zillow enthusiast out there, myself included. Please join me in welcoming Samantha Irby and Kelsey McKinney. Guys. Stop it. Stop it. You wouldn't be clapping so hard if you knew I just pooped two minutes ago. <laughs> We're obsessed with you. <laughs> Hi, everybody. Thank you for coming. This is so great. Yeah, we've already been riffing for like 10 minutes. Yeah, so we're all warmed up. all amped up. <laughs> so I hope you're ready for whatever yeah, happens. Whatever we're going to do. I took a large edible last night and wrote a lot of these questions. So we're just going to bring it in, bring it in, see Wait. where it goes. And I vaped through a towel <laughs> in my hotel room. Because <laughs> I was what? not afraid to fly with vapes, but... What do you... What? <laughs> like, but you I have was, a towel in front of your face? Yeah, you blow into it. Okay, that's... Yeah. Don't tell anyone at the hotel. <laughs> I'm calling. I'm calling whoever it is you yeah, say go, to. Go up to her room and see which... And knock. And I'm like, <laughs> hello? <laughs> there's, there's a cloud of vape vapor behind you. That's beautiful. Oh, I'm surprised you didn't reveal my vape history. Oh, well, I was going to get into that if you, if you want to. Um, I can't remember exactly why I was texting Sam. I was texting Sam about something, and I was like, hey, this is like kind of on a tight deadline. Like, I have a couple questions, and she like didn't respond to my text, which is rare and also rude. And so <laughs> then, like, three days later, I remembered that I had texted her, and I was like, Sam, why? What's going on? And would you, would you like to tell them what happened? You could tell them. <laughs> To the best of my memory, what happened is Sam smoked a rancid vape, got, what, pneumonia? Close. What did you get? What, a lung infection? Yeah. yeah. Got a lung infection and had to go to the hospital, <laughs> which was why she didn't respond to my text. It's true. And then, and then what happened? Well, I lost my voice and it mm -hmm. sounded horrible. It did not sound good. And she sent me a voice memo and she sounded like you sounded like you were speaking into a voice translator app. Like it made no sense. Um, and then it happened another time. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I'm stupid as hell. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> Dumbass. Okay. Speaking of learning. Um, <laughs> All right, Sam's not going to read from the book because you all have the book and you can read it, uh, yeah. but I am going to ask some questions loosely based off the book. Yeah. The first line of this book, since none of you have read it, is, this is not an advice book and I don't know anything. It's true. Um, so my question for you is, did, is there anything that you learned in the process of writing this book or are you still head empty, no thought? Still head empty, no thoughts. I did learn well okay i have to admit something to you i okay. am everybody's like when i say that i'm like late turning my stuff in they're like <laughs> yeah right <laughs> i was so late this time that the copy you How have late? is missing an essay <laughs> Damn. <laughs> all the early copies are like they're short an essay 
I, d- I mean, it's about QVC. You could have told me this before we got up here. And then I <laughs> no, I like the element of yeah, surprise. It's nice to have a little um, I like to see you be shocked. Uh, <laughs> actually, that's the only chapter I want to talk about today. Okay, so, great. Uh, perfect. So I love that. So <laughs> sorry. Uh, no, I learned that I will never be organized. I'll never get my shit together. Yeah. I will never have a b- coherent book putting together. I mean, I just, you'll see, I just wrote about whatever. And there's no theme. Some, I did an interview and some guy was like, what's the theme of this book? And I was just like, <laughs> <laughs> you know, like the fuck are you talking about? It's bullshit. <laughs> like, come on. So, I mean, I guess I, I reconfirmed <laughs> my terribleness. No, I didn't learn anything. <laughs> All right. Jesus. Um, <laughs> I'm just kidding. Okay, so you were super late, which I love because I'm also always late, and yep. that's something that we have in common, <laughs> never turning our pages in on time. Everyone never. loves us. Um, but you say that like none of these have a theme, and that is kind of true. The mm-hmm. theme is you. Yeah. Um, and uh, all, of, <laughs> all of the essays are... Like, they aren't the same format, right? Like, some of them are, like, a screenplay or a bulleted list Mm -hmm. or, you know, all sorts of other versions of essays. And I'm curious, like, how you decide which stories go with which form. Oh, that's a good question. Well, um, (laughs) some things lend themselves to a list. The truth is, if I could write everything as a list, it would be a list because they're so easy. It's just like bam, 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 and I like I feel like a good writer. I'm like, look at me finishing. Um, so the things I can get away with listing always a list, but you can't make a full book of lists. I've been told. Yet. So <laughs> then I try to figure out like other interesting formats because I feel like. For a reader, you don't just want to read like paragraph after paragraph. Maybe you do, but probably not. Um, and so I like figure out how I can break things up so it's fun for me and fun for people who read it, hopefully. Um, and then like the screenplay one, it was so, uh, I'm sure we'll get into this, but I had a pilot mm-hmm. fail. Um, and I was like, okay, I'm never going to make this show let me put the script in the book. And then I called I my... I love it. You know, reduce, reuse, recycle. You, you <laughs> had that actually, pilot. Actually, I'm caring about the earth. You're yeah. right. I'm a saint. You're an environmentalist. Um, but I called my agent, and he was like, yeah, man, Viacom owns that. So <laughs> unless you want to be sued into mm. the fucking ground, no. So I was like, okay, how can I work around this and you'll see I worked around it by telling like writing the screenplay as a story with just enough dialogue to not get me sued (laughs) so I wanted people to just read the whole thing but the man was like no bitch so now you have to read like the story version which I think is pretty good I think it's good, yeah. and I, I think it's interesting to be coming out with a book of essays because, famously, you work on the new Sex and the City reboot, mm-hmm. and <laughs> that is screenwriting, right? Which yes. is a completely different kind of writing. Yeah. So it was kind of nice to see a little screenplay in here. Yeah. One day, like, maybe I'll show you my deleted Sex and the City scenes. I'll put those in a book. Great. But I don't want to get sued by HBO. <laughs> <laughs> So we'll see. Maybe I will describe them and change the names. <laughs> did I did I tell you I tried to I tried so hard to get Carrie to take a shit <laughs> in the show. They wouldn't give me shit. They gave me pee and That's one bodily fluid. And so vomit. Two. So I was like, I won. This that is my stamp. <laughs> on this show is Sarah Jessica Parker fucking hurling on the street. The best. (laughs) There is a lot of like body horror in this book, Mm -hmm. right? Like there's a whole essay called Body Horror, but there's also just at various other points you talking about like living in your body and like having a corporeal form. Mm -hmm. And I'm curious like how you decide which parts of yourself get in the book and which parts don't. 
right? Like, at how much distance does it take from an event for it to be funny enough to go in the book? <laughs> <laughs> okay, there's, there's an essay in here about how I went into anaphylactic shock, which is serious. <laughs> but... <laughs> but I'm an idiot, so... I like thought it was like kind of funny at first, but then like my, <laughs> my face, ca- like I look like Joe Camel, right? I like blew up and I would like look terrible. And Kirsten, my wife was like, we got to go to the emergency room. And I was like, mm, you know, okay. And we went, I couldn't breathe. And this was like during heavy COVID where you couldn't take another person to the emergency room with you. So I'm standing, I got in line. I was like dying and I got in the triage line like to wait my turn. And by the time I got up there, I just was like, "Uh, uh." like, the triage nurse was like, could you move your mask away from your face? And I pulled it down. And I think she like, She like, it was like she got hit by lightning. Like she flew, she flew backwards. She called for somebody to bring a wheelchair. And the whole time I was laughing and trying to make a joke. And they put me on this table in this, in the, uh, in the like ER basically. Serious room. Like not the, not the room with the curtains. It was like, The like where you have like it looks like the morgue, right? Where it's yeah. just a metal table. Awful lighting. <laughs> yeah, it was terrible. And the dude with the one of the doctors was trying to intubate me, and I made a joke. I made like a dick sucking joke. <laughs> like, you know, you gotta pay if you wanna get that any deeper. <laughs> and dude was like, you are going to die. <laughs> Stop. <laughs> So in that moment, that one was fucking funny. I was like, that oh. That is funny. Yeah. I was like, if I live, this is going <laughs> Recording a voice memo yeah. from the table that's like, yeah. Yeah. Dead. <laughs> So I don't take a lot of stuff too seriously. Mm-hmm. So like everything is fodder, you know, unless like someone dies at the end, but I, I'll put anything. Usually things are funny to me mm-hmm. almost to me. <laughs> zero seconds. Zero, zero, zero. I'm not a serious person. <laughs> zero <laughs> seconds. I, can I tell them why you went into anaphylactic shock? <laughs> uh, you guys are going to... Uh, okay. Yes. I think... <laughs> I think it's important to know that Sam and I both have the taste buds of, like, a third grader who hasn't eaten in, like, eight hours. So we are, like, Cheetos, Gushers, like, anything that is made with Red Dye 40, we want to inject it into our body, right? I want everything out of a package. Yes. So as I'm reading this essay, I can kind of tell where it's going. I'm like, oh, she's going to, this is going, going to go poorly, clearly. (laughs) And the thing that sent her to the emergency room was probiotics. And I was like, This is why I don't believe in being healthy. Because, (laughs) first of all, it's too much work. I was like, You're so fucking lucky. Because on a normal night, if if either of us had to go to the ER, they would be like, Well, it makes sense that you're an anaphylactic shot. Yes. (laughs) Yeah. I wished it had been something like fun and cool. You know, like a fruit by the foot or whatever, but <laughs> I, like my stomach was a little rumbly, and I was like, "Wow, I feel, I feel like like healthy people would like take a probiotic," mm-hmm. and I took it, and then I almost died. <laughs> when I tell you I haven't had a vitamin since then, believe that. Well, there trying to kill you. Yeah. I think you should declare them an enemy of your family, actually. <laughs> yes. Great. Just yes. start knocking them off shelves. I should have put the brand name in there. Yeah. But, they, but lawsuit. <laughs> yeah. I'll tell you guys later. <laughs> <laughs> Just writing the name of the vitamins in everyone's book. Yeah. At the side. <laughs> yes. Don't, Don't forget. take these. I want you all to be safe. <laughs> 
Um, okay, here's a question that I wrote for you last night. It's mm-hmm. what kind of whale is best? Oh, man. Tell them like, why I'm asking it also. Okay, <laughs> you guys, I have this thing that I do at night. I like to Not get, that kind. I like to get <laughs> super high. And then I have this uh, like white noise app on my phone and it has all these sounds. So I, <laughs> this is so dumb to say to people. I, let, I put on headphones and I listen to water sounds and then I lay really still on my back in the bed and like pretend there are like waves, uh, waves, whales swimming by me, right? Yeah. I love whales. Uh, I, yeah. And so, so I started doing this like every night. It's very soothing. You should try it. Um, and I guess my favorite, I like the blue whale, like the big Ooh. boy. Yeah. I like the one that can, like, d- doesn't it like do something to you inside? Like when you think that there's an animal who could like eat a school bus? Like that, that's like, exi- it gives me like, like. by accident. They're big enough to like accidentally eat a yes. school bus. Yeah. Yeah. It gives me like, not a horny feeling, but you know, close. <laughs> like a tingle, like an excited, yeah. an, an excited <laughs> feeling. Oh. <laughs> this is so stupid. I'm so glad you guys are here. The meeting. <laughs> I think we're doing great. Um, we it's fine. Yeah. <laughs> Good job. Um, the next question I have under what kind of whale is best is what are your sicko writing behaviors? Because you oh. spend a lot of time in this book talking about things you do that aren't writing, which yes. is like what most people are doing when they're mm-hmm. writing is like actually running errands. Um, <laughs> but how do you write? What are your sicko behaviors? Reveal yourself. Well, I write in the middle of the night now. Mm -hmm. So COVID, everyone was at home. My wife has two teenage children. I mean, I'm suicidal, everyone. But um, (laughs) all they do is make noise. And I am uh, like a a little paranoid. I'm paranoid, but I'm just like, what's that noise? So they're always like moving and fucking around in the kitchen. So like now I have to wait till everyone goes to sleep when the house is quiet. Mm -hmm. And then I usually write from like 10 p.m. to 3 a.m. I know, I know. You'll see when you read it. (laughs) Those are the unhinged thoughts of a person (laughs) awake at three in the morning. Uh, And then I just like, I like to have a lot of blankets on. I'm like mm-hmm. your grandmother, a lot of blankets on, yeah. a blanket on my lap, and like 17 Diet Cokes. Uh-huh. Yeah. That, and that's, that's how I do it. And always like running, sprinting to make a deadline. Always. And then when, how long do you sleep? This is just my own curiosity. Well, I, I don't have a real job, so I get yeah. a, at I, like 10 I'm, o'clock. Yeah, okay. <laughs> like I'm like, o'clock. I can't function on less than like nine hours. So. Oh, well, dang. Yeah, I'm a nightmare. I only, I only need seven. I'm the kind of depressive that's asleep. Um, <laughs> that's, that's my I identity. wish I had that power. No, you don't. <laughs> <laughs> to just sleep through it all? Yes, I do. <laughs> My depression is jealous of your depression. <laughs> Let's fight. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, great. <laughs> I was hoping you would talk a little bit about, like, you write in the book about not, like, wanting to be perceived, right? Like, not wanting um, to, um. like, we're sitting on a stage, so it's, like, kind of <laughs> ironic, right? Like currently being perceived yeah. but there's a form of like being perceived in writing this personal of essays and I'm curious like how you balance that or if it just doesn't apply to the stories themselves I think um sometimes I wish that like <laughs> I was like just a brain and maybe fingers that could tie Okay. So, because it's like the being a person part that's hard. Yeah. Not, like, that's the part where it's like, I am so uncomfortable in my body all the time because mm-hmm. I don't think, like, my clothes are right 
or I'm like, oh no, my shaved head has wrinkles. Can people <laughs> see that? You know, like that kind of thing. I just am so like, and I put all this shit on my body and I shouldn't have because now people look at it and they're like, what is that? And I'm like, like I'm don't look at it. some guns and stuff. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so I think it like pr my personality, I have no fear about like being perceived in that way, but I mostly just don't ever want to be seen by anyone. And the pandemic was great for me because I could sit in my house and like talk into a camera and mm -hmm. show people my messy office. Um, but yeah, I don't, the like who I am is I'm fine being perceived, but like the way my shirt looks, you know what I mean? Yeah. It's like that yeah. kind of stuff that I'm like, if I didn't, if I didn't have to uh, live in a body, I wouldn't. I'd be like yeah. Krang, just a brain, <laughs> a brain. With little fingers. <laughs> yeah. A brain inside a monster. Oh, I mean, it's kind of <laughs> <laughs> So, you know. I'm insane, Kelsey, come Listen, on. Listen, we, <laughs> we are we're insane. insane. Yeah, okay. So I was having a problem writing recently and I texted Sam and I was like, I can't write anything, everything I write is bad. Um, and you told me, simply have fun, which <laughs> is harder than it sounds. And then you read this book and it is just clear that you're having fun yeah. the whole way. So I have a follow-up question to my previous question, which is how? Okay, I have an answer. Oh, I just do whatever I want, right? Without <laughs> thinking. Okay, so like, uh, luckily, I'm at the point, I've had the same publisher all this time, so they like, trust me. <laughs> um, and they don't require an outline or, an, they don't know what I'm gonna do. I just, <laughs> like my last pitch, my agent. You just like, could I have a book? And they were like, yes. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, kind of, they, my editor was like, what are you gonna do in the next book? And I was like, the same shit <laughs> I always do, but like slightly older and, and different health problems. And, and they just let me go. So I, I, I think because I just do what I want, that mm -hmm. it's fun. If I ever had to like write for an assignment, I'll, like, okay, listen, the New York Times reached out and uh -oh. was, <laughs> I mean, I've written op-eds for them before and every time a 70 year old white man chases down every contact I have to try to argue with me about what I said. I don't even write controversial things, it's just like, I'm sad. And then he's like, blah, 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 blah. okay. So they reached out and they were, and they were like, would you write an op-ed about the things you are like afraid to have an opinion on? Like the things you won't write about. And I they was were like, like, do you want to stand in front of this firing squad? <laughs> okay. <laughs> right. So I was like, no, thank you, <laughs> gray lady. I will not be doing that. Yeah, and it's like not. things like that, I have a hard time writing. Like when I have an assignment, I, it's bad. But when I just do my own thing, so I meant for you to just like do what you want, do what feels good, yeah. and then like sell that. <laughs> you know? Simple, right? You just, <laughs> we'll just do it. Um, okay, now I want to ask you a question about poop. Yeah. Um, which is that I think that like poop jokes are always so easy, right? Mm -hmm. Because poop is inherently funny. Mm -hmm. How do you make sure that it stays funnier than that? Uh, <laughs> a like, graphic detail. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I really am just like my goal. Is, or I have two goals with my poop writing. Great. One is to clear the path so I can poop whenever, wherever, and nobody's weird about it. Yeah. Cause they all know what I'm gonna do, right? Like, so if I'm like, listen, you know, okay. You know how like you go out with people, let's say you go to dinner, you have to have diarrhea or I have to have diarrhea. <laughs> and so then I'm like, I'll, I'll be back. 
And then like you come back after 47 minutes uh, <laughs> to discover that no one ordered a drink or an app because they were waiting for you. My friends don't do that. They know They're better. like, they will eat a whole meal while I'm in the bathroom. They don't care. And that's like part of the thing is just to be like, you don't have to stop your life. You, just, you know what I'm going to do. So keep, go do your thing. You know if I say I have to go to the gas station <laughs> while we're in the car, that means I have to empty my gas station. <laughs> My other goal, my second goal, is just to make people talk about poop more. You would not believe the number of people who describe their bowel movements to me, and I love it. Just in emails? No, like at readings and stuff, people will... One lady brought me a roll of toilet paper. Was it the good And I was cut? like... It, well, first of all, it was one ply, so... <laughs> So I should have thrown it at her head. <laughs> but it was so nice because I was like, you see me. Yeah. You see me. Not entirely because of the one ply, <laughs> but. But making it funny, I think just like being honest about it. <laughs> yeah, but there's a form of honesty that is common in like body horror that is very serious honesty, mm -hmm, right? Like mm -hmm. it's like, I'm breaking bounds by talking about poop and that is not what you're doing. You're just no. talking about it. Yeah, I don't, it's not like a precious thing. You know, like whatever health, health problems <laughs> you have, like you could be serious about it or you could treat it like a joke. I treat all of mine like a joke and it makes it, easier to deal with because like if I get serious about it it's like it's changed my whole life I can't do anything spontaneous ever I cannot eat spontaneously I mm -hmm. cannot go any place spontaneously and like no one wants to hear that but if I say <laughs> if I say someone handed me a cupcake and I ate it and I shit myself on the train <laughs> that's a way of saying it without being like oh, I can't eat anything you know <laughs> so. that's what writer t writing teachers mean when they say show don't tell <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah I just think if I like laugh about it and make it less serious it feels less serious because I don't want to get into a conversation about like healthcare and all that. But, like that's what people do when you are serious about your illness. And it's like, I don't want to do that. You're so. not trying to have a conversation about your healthcare no. with those people. No. Or healthcare in general. I've had people ask me about, like, are you kidding? Shut up. Are you kidding? <laughs> do, you, <laughs> do you write your essays front, like straight in the line? Yes, but I always know the ending first. I don't write anything unless I know how it so ends. So you have like the bookends and then yeah. you work between. In my mind, I know where we're going and I always write to the ending. And if I can't figure out how to land the plane, I don't write it. So there, there is an essay in my drafts from like two books ago and I keep returning to it because the idea is very funny. It's called, Is It Ever Worth It To Be Friends With A Man? The eternal question, yeah. I mean, the answer is no, but like, <laughs> I had a way, I had a tough time figuring out how to get to Where the you're going. no, so yeah. it, it has not, it has not been written. So it just says, is there a way to be friends with a man? And then like a hundred lines down, no. <laughs> yes. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but uh, yeah, if I think like once I like am on fire, for, I usually don't sit and write all the way through. Mm -hmm. I don't have that kind of discipline, but I do like start and then end in a couple so of days. So that's why I'm asking because I think that in a lot of these essays you have like either metaphors or like one-off thoughts mm -hmm. that are not connected to the essay, right? Mm -hmm. That it, it clearly makes sense. But I, I was asking because if you're starting and stopping, right, then you're having thoughts between, mm -hmm. right? And that's where you could end up, you know, putting in something about how we're lucky to live in the same time as the little vibrators that suck into an essay that's not about that, right? Like, that that's- That is the truth. You're, it's true. Women in STEM. <laughs> um, <laughs> true. 
Um, so like, are you, but are you like writing those thoughts down while you're away from your computer or are you just keeping them? Well, safe? that is very sweet of you to think that I do anything <laughs> regarding this work away from the computer. Um, <laughs> sometimes I text thoughts to myself like, you should take that detour. I mean, usually... This is a sicko behavior. Yeah, like You usually, go in your phone and you type Sam Irby and then you text to yourself. No, I do. I send myself all kinds of stuff. That's the thing I'm afraid, like if somebody ever found my phone, they would find my text thread to myself and be like, Uh-oh. this bitch is unhinged. Um, yeah, I don't... Like the little detours and stuff, I usually think of those as like, ways for me to have you know have a little fun in the middle of a long thing i just can't write a straight up like this was the beginning this was the end i gotta take a circuitous route to get to the end um but yeah i don't think when i'm away from the computer at all i love that i'm like what is on tv what happened on the new episode of 911. Like, that is. Uh, speaking of TV, do you want to tell me what the QVC essay is about that I didn't fucking get to read? Because oh my, my God. copy doesn't have it? Yes. <laughs> get ready, everyone. The QVC, I got obsessed with QVC because we had to get cable at the start of the pandemic because we needed faster internet and, like, they won't. Yeah. Like, you had. Ugh, it was a whole thing. So, one night I was, like, sitting home. Uh, and Isaac Mizrahi Live was on yeah, QVC. Of course. And I was like, God damn, these women are so nice. They're so knowledgeable. The <laughs> shit they have to remember, like the thread count and the Pima cotton and the whatever, <laughs> it's astonishing. They all have like French tips. And they're usually by themselves, and right? So they don't hair. even get to talk yeah. to somebody. Yeah, and they're like, you know, Jackie or Marsha <laughs> or whatever. And there's, and I became transfixed. And then I started watching QVC like it was regular TV. <laughs> <laughs> the pandemic really fucked me up, you guys. Um, and <laughs> I You're bought, normal. I'm pretty sure that's normal, actually. I bought a few things. <laughs> and I love it. I, ju- I love QVC. <laughs> That's beautiful. So the essay is about uh, four things that I bought from QVC, interspersed with why I like the channel in general. Oh, that yeah. sounds great. I wish I had gotten to read it in the book. <laughs> Thank you so much. Here it is. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> just kidding. Uh, there is a part in this book, this is just about being the kind of person who likes to buy things, which we both are. Uh, there's a part in this book where you are doing like a fake Grub Street diet, mm-hmm. which I love because that's one of my favorite formats they for jokes. They asked me to do a real one. Are you going to do it? I would shit a river through New York City. That's what the people to, want to, to read. Like seven days a week, go to a restaurant? No. Yeah. I would be in traction. Like, you'd be reading it like, haha, this is so funny, and I'd be in the hospital. But they'd probably give you, like, a purple heart. I was like, could I, could I, like, go to, like, a rice restaurant and a (laughs) banana restaurant? And they're like, like like, no, you have to eat at real places. And I was like, well, you got to wait till my guts are a little better. So maybe one day I'll do one, a real one. In the fake one, you're constantly like putting words and then underlining them, which (laughs) is very funny, except that I'm an idiot. So I was reading the book and I was like, can't buy any of these things. <laughs> Nightmare. Um, I would like to talk about one, why you did that to me, and two, um, our shared love for packets of things that go into water and turn the water <laughs> to something else. <laughs> I have so many recommendations for that. Get ready. Um, so the underlying thing I just thought was funny. It is funny. I'm sorry you're dumb. Um, Thank you. Okay, I'll, t- I'll tell you a dumb thing I did the other day. I w- <laughs> oh, no. I, one of the things I do on my phone, because truly I'm a child, is like if I'm typing a word, I wait to see how many letters it takes before my phone figures out yeah. what I'm trying That's to say. That's a fun game you're playing with your phone. The other day, I was writing by hand and paused... <laughs> 
like the word was going to continue. And I was like, I got to be institutionalized. <laughs> this is too much. This is, oh, God. Okay, so it's you're not. It's incredible that not we dumb. share one brain. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. Between the two. We are yeah. conjoined, it's unconjoined, beautiful. conjoined twins. <laughs> Brains with fingers. <laughs> Let's talk about water packets. Please. I would love to. My number one drip drop. If you I love are hungover, sick, or just hate drinking water. Want to pretend you're healthy? Yeah. Mm -hmm. You pour this stuff in the water, you shake it up, and then you're like super hydrated with electrolytes, and it tastes good, and it is a better way for me <laughs> to drink water. Because, uh, you know, it, that's boring. Yeah. I, I love that. I will drink any emergency <laughs> I put these little tablets my, for Christmas. Kirsten gave me a bunch of tubes of tablets that go in water. What do the tablets I, do? It's like the same thing. Like electrolytes. I love science. <laughs> <laughs> me too. I was like, this is so convenient. I, so I love Alka-Seltzer. I'm like the one person <laughs> under 80 who takes Alka-Seltzer. I mean... I love a thing that goes in water. It feels like magic. Yeah. And it does stuff for you. Hmm. <laughs> yeah. You do it too. Don't look at me. Oh, like I do that. it all the time. I think it's I think I do it because people used to have crystal light packets. Do you remember mm -hmm. those? But oh, my family didn't too. have them and so I was really envious of them. Oh. Now I have a lot no, of water. We packets. were like a Kool-Aid and then crystal Ooh. light house. So lucky. I've been on the packet train <laughs> for a long time. Um, okay, I, it's time to take audience questions. Let other Ooh. people do questions. Um, is there Great. anything else you'd like to say before the people begin? No, let's go. With their, their thoughts, Thank you for prayers. coming. You guys look amazing. I love seeing you. Ask me whatever you want. To be clear, thoughts and prayers are not welcome, only questions. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what if someone was like, I did an event in a church last <laughs> night, and the pastor, unbeknownst to me, the pastor was there? And he came up afterwards and was like, God bless you. And I was like, sir, I'm sorry I defiled your church. <laughs> Please pray for me. <laughs> if you know how to get us out of hell, let us know. Yeah. Like, you have a direct line, right? Like, let them know. Let yeah. them know I'm actually good, even though I'm cosplaying as bad. Oh, man, look how many dudes are here. Hello, men. <laughs> It's incredible. I you guys take have back friends. what I said about being your friend. <laughs> Obviously, I want to be your friend, and I love. Let you. them ask their question. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> That's a good question. Yes, those I write start to finish and send. Okay, first of all, I'm sorry that you haven't gotten one in a couple of weeks, but I've been whoring myself out for this <laughs> stupid book. As soon as that's over, I'll get back to it. Okay, so I used to sit on the couch with the remote and pause the TV. Too hard, too hard. So I find a good looking one that's like, sometimes the cases are like 17 minutes long. No. So I find a good nine to 11 minute case. Mm -hmm. And then I watch, I don't skip ahead, so, because I want it to be as uh, pure Authentic. as possible. <laughs> I That's don't... ethics in journalism, baby. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, I, so I start it, I write the little things about what they're wearing. Uh, I do copy the what the case is about from the YouTube description, because Ooh. those are always funny. And then I write, pause when there's something to say. And then I turn it back on. And sometimes I write while I watch, like, or listen um, in a different tab. Or I'll just, like, watch, write a little, watch, write a little. Mm -hmm. It truly is the joy of my life. <laughs> when the show got canceled, I, I, man, I was, like, bereft. But <laughs> so when I started doing it, um, I came home one day, and we have a house phone because my wife has kids and believes in having a house phone. And there was a message on the house phone that was like, hi, this is David at Warner Brothers calling for Samantha Irby. And I was like, no, no. 
uh uh-uh. And Kirsten's like, call back. And I'm like, no, they probably discovered my blog or my newsletter and I'm about to go to jail. No, I'm not calling. (laughs) So I waited like four days and then I called him and he was like, hi, I'm the executive producer or I'm the senior vice president at Warner Brothers and I oversee Judge Mathis. (laughs) And I was like, my heart fell out of my butt. And I was like, "Uh (laughs) uh-huh. He's like, someone forwarded me your newsletter and we have all read it and the judge has read it. Wow. And then he was like, would you like to work with us? And then he gave me a very low offer to make a podcast. And I was like, oh, no, thank you, sweetie, but I'm glad you love the newsletter. So... (laughs) So it was, re- it was really great. It, w- it was so great. I don't know if like Greg regularly reads it, but... Thank you for getting me into one of my favorite TV shows, Succession. Oh, you're welcome. Did you watch Sunday's episode? It was so good. My poor Shiv, what, what a pickle Wait, she's what's in. your question? Wait. I'm not going to spoil. No spoil. Come on. You think I would fuck it up for you? Let no. her ask her a question. Sorry. Sorry. This is the best interruption of my entire life, so I'm fi- very happy. <laughs> Who is your favorite Roy Ooh. family Roman. member, and why is it Tom? Roman. <laughs> Roman. Serious Roman. person. Roman. He is so funny. He's like a sexy worm. He's... <laughs> Like, greasy and shifty. (laughs) I I love Roman. Also, I love that he likes to sexually, like, satisfy himself, and I wouldn't have to be involved, right? (laughs) Like, if I was out with Roman, I'd be like, go in the bathroom, and I'll call you a bunch of dirty names, and you can jerk off. And I can keep my hands clean. So, Roman. (laughs) Roman is my guy. Great choice. I love Roman. Hello. First Hi. of all, I am a huge fan of both of you, so I'm very excited to be here. Oh, good. Hello. We're excited that you're here. Oh, thank you. I feel honored. No. <laughs> um, <laughs> very serious and important question for you, Sam. Can we have your opinion on bidets? Well, okay. <laughs> so my friend sent us bidets when I, okay, here's a TMI for you. I, in like November, developed rectal ulcers, which, (laughs) that's the right noise. (laughs) It it feels like someone is shooting lightning up your asshole. It is the worst, it's, it's, I didn't tell you about that. No, I, well, I think we told. I I blocked it. I forgot. <laughs> I'll I'll show you the cream after Great. this. I can't wait. Um, I had to get this special compounded cream made, and it was terrible. And my friend Anna, who's like a lovely person, sent some bidets, and I because she's like, I know you're not supposed to touch your butt, and I was like, but I also don't want to have like lukewarm water in my butt, so. <laughs> I do have a travel bidet, like, that I never remember to bring anywhere because it's disgusting, but um, I'm, I'm anti-bidet, except my wife has to have a big surgery, and uh, she's going to be a little immobile, so they're installing the bidets now while I'm out of the house. Oh. So I will report back. I feel like I just am going to have a wet shirt. You know, have you ever... <laughs> Do you know how a bidet works? <laughs> I don't think your shirt's no. going to be wet. <laughs> no. <laughs> but you know how, like, you have to give a urine sample, right? And you... I am the no. person who, like... Hold on. Hold, let, cut. Okay. When you have to give a urine sample at the hospital and they give you the cup... I'm the person who, like, the back of my pants has, like, (laughs) piss on it. So I feel like with a bidet, it would just be that all the time. I invite you to re-ask this question in, like, six months, and we'll see what has happened. I will report back, and you know I will. (laughs) If I didn't do anything else, I'll talk about the bidet. 
So I first was introduced to you through Glennon Doyle's podcast. That's how I <laughs> discovered. Oh, what a ride for you, huh? <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. You thought I was one thing, and then you no, were like, oh, I love no. It. <laughs> I, I, I this is not uplifting at all. I dove straight in. <laughs> Uh, but I guess I just want to know, like, who are some of your um, favorite authors and creators when, like, you're, you're pumping out your amazing stuff? Who are you listening to? Who are you reading? Okay. Um, I don't read any... She's illiterate. No, no, I do read! <laughs> I was trying to think of a diplomatic way to say I don't read any writing. essayists, yeah. especially not while I'm writing, because I, I will either be like sort of like intimidated because I can't do what they do, or I will start like writing in their voice. It's like having a friend with a British accent. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yes, yeah. So I don't really read a lot of essays. I don't read poetry. I'm so sorry, but mm-mm. Um, <laughs> I read a lot of like thrillers and horror. I like to terrify myself. Uh, the music I listen to, I, I have found that lately I am listening to all the stuff I listened to in high school, right? So a lot of like grunge and like Liz Fair and that kind, you know, breeders, I'm back in the breeders, big time. I, I was that. listening to Smashing Pumpkins first record the other day, still goes, still <laughs> goes. Um, so that's what I listen to, old music. Like my wife's kids are always like, Grow up. <laughs> like, okay, well, t- let's put on Beach House. Um, <laughs> uh, who, uh, what, I mean, I probably like all the people you think I like, right? Like, there's not that many, you know? I mean, I guess there are a lot, but not that many, like, in my, you know, throw a, throw a piece of spaghetti and you'll hit someone that I like. I don't know that there's anyone I'm not a fan of. I don't pay attention to young shit. It's too confusing. I can't listen to, like, mumble rap or whatever. I can't. And I I came up on, like, Ice Cube, right? Mm -hmm. I can't listen to, like, that kind of stuff. I don't TikTok. But I downloaded it so that I could watch TikToks people send to me. Uh, I like middle-aged shit. (laughs) Yeah. Great. Yeah. I like pretending to relive the 90s by listening to all my old music and watching like my so-called life on repeat. That's beautiful. I love that. Hello. Hi. Um, I love your writing so much. Kelsey, I love your podcast so much. You're both awesome and I recommend you to everyone. Um, You were talking about having fun with your writing and Mm -hmm. I love your writing so much because it's so like conversational and it flows really naturally and like when I describe it to people I'm like it's like it feels like she's like not trying but like you know she's trying so hard because it's not like you know mm-hmm. what I mean but no like, I got it you just sounds I'm not so good. and so like <laughs> <laughs> I do try <laughs> it's out, like, I it want your really 17 dollars very badly <laughs> I try <laughs> Um, so, like, I'm just wondering, you know, as you're talking about having fun with it, how, I'm, I'm really curious about your writing and editing process. Like, like when you're writing, how much of it comes out in that really natural flowing way? Or do you have to go back and edit it a lot to make it sound as good as it, you know, ends up? Here's a secret. I don't edit ever. <laughs> I don't edit myself ever. It's too hard. It's too hard. I don't want to kill any of my darlings, right? I think every joke is the funniest joke. I think every story is worthwhile. Um, so I don't do it. It's just like converse, conversational typing, just my thoughts onto the page. I like, there are some writers that you can probably guess who like kind of talk down their noses to their audience. And that is not me. I, I want it to feel like we're all, I'm looking around and we're all in the same shit talking about it, right? Like not like, I know, da, 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 da. Um, and editing, I leave that to the editor. She gets paid to do that, not me. I gotta give point. Maria something to do, so <laughs> I send Maria the raw material. And here's another secret: I don't read what she takes out. <laughs> I don't. That's not your you know business. You're supposed to, you know how they, it's like track changes. I accept, accept, accept all accept, changes. Accept, accept. 
I'm not reading that. Yeah. What if you say if you say that word needs to change, it's changed. I'm not gonna fight. I just want to get to the part where I get the check, right? So I'm like, I'm like, <laughs> she cut. There are some really long pieces in this book, and one of them, the Hollywood one, mm. she cut. She was like, "This is this too long," and I was like, "Whatever," and. <laughs> She cut, I think she said like 2,500 words out of it. I don't even know which words. Yeah. I didn't compare. I didn't do anything. I was just like, that's your job. So I don't think about editing. Because like if I did, I would never stop. I would keep tinkering. And then you can always tell when somebody's work is like really worked over. And I, come on, a, a poop essay I'm going <laughs> to ring myself out for? Absolutely not. <laughs> I'm sending that on. <laughs> so when you're telling jokes about your medical emergencies, mm -hmm. something I think is very normal because I do it too, do you have tips for getting people to laugh at your jokes? Because <laughs> I have been unsuccessful in the midst of my own medical emergencies and trying to make them funny. So do you have secrets, <laughs> tricks as to how to get other people in on the joke? Uh, it, well, if you tell it like it's the funniest thing that ever happened to you, people will be naturally inclined to like, to laugh, you know? But also, I don't care. If people don't laugh, that's on them. It's not on me. I can't, I can't do anything more than I can do. Neither can you. Just assume they're not on your wavelength, <laughs> which is a good tool to save your ego. And like try to tell it to someone else. But like the delivery, just be like, you want to hear a hilarious thing that happened to me? <laughs> I got bit by a tiger. <laughs> and then they'll be like, oh, ha, ha, ha. And then you just keep telling the story and like you're laughing together. I, you answered the question, but Sam once told me that you said, I think I'm the funniest person who exists. And like that is the way that you get laughs, right? Yes. It's like you it's not have to true. laugh at your own joke. Right. It's not true, but I, I'm the first person laughing at my yeah. jokes, which like gets other people to laugh. So if you just are delusional, if you're a... <laughs> delusional bozo such as myself you just be like I'm funny no matter who I'm talking to and the, I had to do uh, fresh air like the, you, the you, right? fancy well uh, it, uh, <laughs> so they're like very serious right and so I'm like laughing at my own jokes during the thing I didn't see her. We, she was in LA and I was in a studio in Kalamazoo where I lived. And I, she would not break. She wouldn't break. And I kept trying. And the engineer is in the room with me and he was laughing. So that was like, I was like, okay, Jeremy, you, you're doing the Lord's work because I'm like bombing with this lady. Uh, <laughs> Sometimes but I still, I believed in myself. I believed in my delusion. <laughs> and I got through it. And it came out today. Every, did you listen to, okay. I'll never, he, I'll never hear it. But every like 60 to 70 year old person I know was like, I heard you on Fresh Air. <laughs> and I was like, okay, Gertrude, I hope you love it. <laughs> Okay, Mima. I'm glad. Everyone say thank you to Sam for writing this book and coming no! out. Stop it. You, you are a menace. <laughs> You're terrible. Stop. Thank you. No. Stop it. Thank you all so much. This was fun. I think, I don't, I don't know if they did an announcement before, but... I'm going to sign if you want to get in line. If you don't want to get in line, which I hear you, um, there are pre, are there pre signed? Oh. <laughs> Sorry, babes. If you want a signature, you have to come look at my sweaty face to get it and like stand butts to nuts with everybody else. But if you don't, I'm not offended and I'll see you on the internet. <laughs>